Hello and welcome to Issues and Answers, the production of the Government Information Service. I am your host, Kendall Eugene, and with me today is the director of NEMO, Ms. Kenesha Jeffrey Ezenbert, and the director of the National Emergency Operations Center, Mr. Lucius Lake. Good morning and welcome to the program. Good morning. morning. Thank you me. both for joining me. And uh, today we have a very interesting discussion, uh, something that I believe a lot of people know about but aren't particularly sure how to deal with the issue when it comes around. So that's why I have you two here to give us the answers to that. And what I'm talking about is the annual tsunami exercise that is due for us, uh, I think, maybe next month, March next month. Um, before we jump into everything, just give us a brief um, intro on who you are and uh, your role in your organization. Okay. My name is Kenisha Jeffrey Isambert. I am the director of NEMO. My role is to ensure that um, our country is in a state of readiness, preparedness, in the eventuality of any emergency, mm -hmm. any disaster, or any incident. And um, I work with the various agencies. So NEMO is not, um, is not a standalone um, organization, but we work with the various agencies to ensure that we are prepared should in case we need to, um, we need to react for um, any disaster. So in no way or form is Nemo in charge of the weather? No, this is <laughs> Met Service responsibility. <laughs> so we get our information from Met Services. So if um, we're waiting for, um, we are waiting and we are watching a system, mm -hmm. Met will tell us, well, this is the weather, this is um, what is going on, and we take our cue from Met. Met is our official source. We are not the weather. We you get it like everybody season, else. You are the Met office. <laughs> yes, we are. We are Met services during the hurricane season indeed. All right. Uh, Mr. Lake, uh, your role with the uh, National Emergency Operations Center? My role is to more or less manage the event. Mm -hmm. If anything, impact of any of the disasters where Nemo is calling, I run the operations center to coordinate that event and ensure equitable movement of persons, supplies, relief, whatever it is to ensure that we're able to handle the situation. Okay. Whichever it is. It doesn't have to be hurricane, so anything mm -hmm. at all that mm -hmm. comes in where Nemo has a role to play. Mm -hmm. Any natural change. disaster. Any or natural man -made or man-made disaster disasters. Event. Once it's beyond the, the capability of one entity to deal with and Nemo gets involved as a coordinating entity, mm -hmm. I get to head that portion of it and deal with the headache. Okay. Well, let's get into our discussion uh, today, and it has to do with the uh, tsunami exercise. Um, for somebody who may be hearing that for the first time, what exactly would the tsunami exercise entail? What is it about? If I start off, Carib Wave is an annual tsunami exercise of the Intergovernmental Coordination Group mm -hmm. for the tsunami and other coastal hazard warning systems in the Caribbean and agencies. So it's, this is an annual exercise where the entire region partakes in preparing for a tsunami. Bottom line. Mm -hmm. So, and it every March, we work with the in, with the Pacific Tsunami Warning Center mm -hmm. and the other islands in the region to prepare to see how we are going to deal with it in the event of that eventuality. Okay. That's separate and apart from volcano eruptions, hurricanes, storms, floods, anything else. This one is specifically for tsunamis. Mm -hmm. Um, so the, the objectives and the goal of the upcoming drill, um, can you provide us with an overview of that? What exactly are we looking at? Or the purpose of the exercise is to validate and advance tsunami preparedness in the Caribbean. The objectives are to practice and evaluate communications between regional tsunami services provided to member states, mm -hmm. evaluate the tsunami procedures and programs within the member states and territories. So this is just to ensure that in the event we get hit, we get impacted, we know what to do. How important is that for us to know <laughs> what to do during <laughs> a tsunami? It is very important because um, you need to know what to do to save your life. Mm -hmm. um, you need to know the do's and don'ts um, when it comes to a tsunami, as well as um, how to protect your property, yourself. Um, 
we need to, we are here today to educate the public um, to, and again to provide you life-saving, potential mm -hmm. life-saving because depending on where you are at the time, um, there is very little that you may be able to do, but we are there to give some guidance. If you, um, they'll tell you move to higher grounds, for example, if mm -hmm. you're not close to higher ground, you need to know what to do. You would have to move as far inland as possible. So we're just here to educate and give you the do's and don'ts in the event of um, a tsunami. Okay. Um, with a tsunami, I think uh, people who probably um, watched news and um, maybe read about it would think, if I can climb a tree, then I'll be okay. If I can go <laughs> up a mountain, I'll be fine. Uh, what specific areas or communities did you, did you select for the tsunami trail, and why were these um, communities chosen? Um, we want the tsunami exercise to be one where everybody, the entire country, want right. to participate. Because although you may be, the most vulnerable communities would be those coastal communities, like you right. have Anslery, mm -hmm. Labry, Schwazel, um, Grozili. Mm -hmm. But um, even if you're not from these areas, at the time, you may not be, you may not know where you are. Mm -hmm. at the time. Mm -hmm. So we want everybody to participate, know the hazards associated with it, know um, the do's and don'ts, what to do, because you never know where you are at the time. But um, I think for this exercise, we may look at a focus on communities like Labry, mm -hmm. because um, Labry is just completing a tsunami ready project um, where we want to be certified. Um, it's a pilot project, but we're going to replicate it in the various communities. So we want to look at testing the effectiveness because they have their plans, they have tested the plans, mm -hmm. we are now looking at putting up signages and stuff like that. So we want to test to see if the entire community is as prepared as the drills they would have done in getting prepared for that project. So the communities themselves have their own little drills happening even before the uh, main drill? Yes, well we have um, district disaster committees, committees mm -hmm. and these are um, the, we have 18 district disaster committees because we have 17 districts, mm -hmm. but 18 because ancillary and canneries, because of their location and their vulnerability, they were um, separated into two separate um, committees. And the, that committee is responsible for disaster management within their communities. Okay. So we equipped the chairperson, they have um, a team. We try to equip them, give them as much training so that they in turn can go within the communities and educate and build capacity. It is our, um, what we're working towards is building community resilience and building capacity within the communities. Because if you can ensure that everybody is empowered, then you would have been a lot more successful in the life-saving um, activities that you want to have and mm -hmm. persons being more proactive than reactive when it comes to not just tsunamis, but any incident, any disaster, any hazard. Because, I mean, that's very good. It'll be strange mm -hmm. if you have, um, the Nemo head office coming down to canneries, mm -hmm. not from canneries, and talk about when you get the alert of a tsunami to come to higher ground. You leave that for the district disaster committees who are intimate, who have intimate knowledge of their communities. Yeah. They would know the vulnerabilities, who are the displaced persons, who are those who need assistance, where the schools are located, mm -hmm. where the low lying areas are. So, as Erica said, you champion your persons with the disaster, district disaster committees to educate their persons. Mm -hmm. Nemo will be there to the overarching supervisory support mm -hmm. where needed. But the district disaster committees are the ones to go to. So they will tell you when it happens, you hear right now, Scott, you get information, let's go uphill. Mm -hmm. I do have to tell you where to go uphill in Castries or further inland or go to the, a taller building which looks strong enough to withstand heavy waves coming in. You can't go and do that in Sufra if you're not from Sufra. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that is how the, the, the reliance on the district disaster committees to function and assist in getting the wood out. Now, how frequently um, does the NEMO conduct the uh, tsunami drill? And what lessons have um, we learned from the past drills that we can implement into the one coming up? Um, our, the, well, carry wave is done on an annual basis, mm -hmm. but um, Sometimes we do have simulations where we work with the schools mm -hmm. and we test to see, um, well, not just tsunamis, but um, various drills. Mm -hmm. um, I will let Mr. Lake talk further, but um, um, with reference to um, the do's and don'ts or what we have, the lessons learned. Mm -hmm. um, but last year, 
one of the lessons that we learned, and it was not just from St. Lucia, but because it's a regional exercise. Um, you had in some countries, the siren, the tones, it was a bit confusing. What we learned is that um, we need to stick to one siren because the citizens or residents highlighted that they were hearing sirens from the police, sirens from the fire service, um, the sirens from our early warning system, okay. and they were a bit confused as to what to respond to. So that is one lesson learned, and we are definitely working to ensure that we correct that. Um, also, our communication. We had a delay in um, the communication, the text messages via our service providers, mm -hmm. um, or the entities that we will, even the, the, the interrupt, the broadcast interrupt from the various TV stations, TV and, stations radio, and radio, we yes. had a problem with that. And um, we're looking to ensure that that is um, fixed because in the event of a tsunami, there is not much time. Mm -hmm. For example, if you have, what, 21 minutes, 20 minutes, <laughs> and that includes the time you as the um, focal, focal point, point. Mm -hmm. get that warning from um, UE Seismic, from um, the Pacific so PwC, one, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so you really do not have time. That is not much time to get your population to higher ground or to safety. So communication, it is critical that we get that right, ensuring that everybody is informed mm -hmm. in a time that, that gives them enough time to save their life or to move to higher ground or to assist somebody if they have to. Okay. So that is two areas. So Mr. Lake, as the person that was in charge last year in that whole exercise, will give a little more on um, the lessons learned on his part. Okay. The biggest issue we had was communication. Mm -hmm. As we have seen previously, anytime the, the, syst the systems, both Digicel and Flow, are inundated with messages and calls coming through, the system shuts down. Okay. So that was okay. the first okay. issue, that messages came in way after after the activity was discontinued, mm -hmm. persons were still receiving messages. So we have had dialogue with the, the different companies mm -hmm. to see how we can mitigate against it. It, it, it may happen again. But the, the issue is getting the information out. And as I said, if you have tw half an hour, right. information comes. There's a process which triggers the information. You will not, I will not get it. There are certain key persons who receive the information. Mm -hmm. And they pass it on. And it is left to these persons like Nemo to disseminate as quickly as possible. That is why we have in these roundup meetings with the media houses. When you do get a text, and if you are sure it's not from a partner, but it is from one of the recognized telecom companies, we know your interviews and you make it money getting it done. A short interrupt to read the text. This is a tsunami, one a tsunami, move to higher ground. Mm -hmm. The intent is to follow it with a particular tone that the population may get used to this one tone. When you hear that tone, it is moved to higher ground. It's not a question, is that an ambulance? Is that the police? Is that a pep? Once you hear that particular tone, mm -hmm. it means move to higher ground. That is where we want to get. So there will be no, the messages will follow. Mm -hmm. You hear it now? Mm -hmm. Move. Move. All right. We'll take a break, and when we get back, uh, we'll discuss more on um, public perception now, because I can already anticipate having a time getting folks to pay attention to that tone <laughs> and move into higher ground. It's yes. almost like until we see the wave, we won't believe. Yes. Okay, so we'll talk more about how we can now have the public and probably leverage the uh, different radio stations and maybe even some social media influencers yes. in organizing and getting individuals keen on moving and listening to that warning sign. So we'll take a break and uh, when we get back, we have more with our directors from NEMO and the National Emergency Operations Center. We're talking about uh, the uh, tsunami exercise due for St. Lucia probably sometime next month. Um, more from <laughs> our guests in a bit. Stay with us. The St. Lucia standard mark is a mark of excellence. It can be applied to goods produced in St. Lucia. The island's largest bottling water companies carry the St. Lucia standard mark, indicating that they meet the national standard for packaged water, SLNS 29 2006. The standard for prepackaged water specifies the requirements for the purity, treatment, 
bacteriological acceptability, packaging and labeling of all bottled water that is prepackaged for sale and used as beverages or in foods. The standard for prepackaged water should be used in conjunction with the Code of Hygiene Practice for the collecting, processing, and marketing of packaged water, SLCP 4, 2003. This message is brought to you by the Commonwealth Standards Network. Welcome back to Issues and Answers, a production of the Government Information Service and the National Television Network. With me, we have uh, the director for NEMO, Mrs. Kenisha Jeffrey Ezenbert, and also the director for the National Emergency Operations Center, Mr. Lucia Fleek, discussing the uh, tsunami exercise, the annual tsunami exercise um, due for St. Lucia. And just before we, were, we went into the break, we were chatting about that warning sign that people need to pay attention to. Um, so what are some of the effective measures that are now in place um, for, a, for an effective coordination between NEMO, the other emergency um, centers and organizations, and the general public? It's just a con at this point, it's a conversation. It's an ongoing conversation because persons in key positions would have moved on as time progresses. Mm -hmm. So whereas this is an annual exercise, some persons would have had that information may or may not pass it on. And persons are of the view that we are a God-fearing country. No. We're not going to get it. Mm -hmm. Sanusha has been hit by two tsunamis as far as the records show. We, we have been hit twice. Okay. So the region has been hit twice by two tsunamis which affected St. Lucia. If we have any faith in the experts and what they say, we are due for the big one. There is no indication as to when. Mm, that would have been my question. <laughs> <laughs> if the experts telling us that we are due, let us know when. They say that we are overdue for one. Okay, okay. Um, you said that we were hit before. Yes. Was it the, um, the huge tsunami wave or repercussions of a tsunami that um, affected the island? Repercussions of a tsunami. Because persons are vivid, when a tsunami comes in, and, unless God dictates to cover the entire island, there are dynamics with, we don't have enough time to go, the dynamics of a tsunami coming in. And if you look at what happened to Fukushima when it came in, mm -hmm. it was this one wave that came in. And the waves then came on bringing the water further mm -hmm. inland. Mm -hmm. And then you have the drawback, which is what is que which is questionable. That's why persons are asked to move to higher ground. You can't climb a tree, a mango tree will feel that strong. The drawback will go That, that would be my, 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 my mindset immediately. <laughs> climb a mango tree. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have enough branches we can hold on to. That I am being very honest. Yeah, uh, but the roots we have the people who think <laughs> like me. <laughs> if we hear tsunami, we immediately think, okay, maybe that's higher ground. Pen the pitos if but we can. So, just a little segue in that when we did this after the, the survey, there was after the exercise last year, there was a survey, mm -hmm. and one of the respondents put in, notwithstanding he got the information, he still went. The person went to VG Beach to check. To check, you get information on a tsunami alert. Notwithstanding this person got it within the time given, mm -hmm. the person stated that they still went to VG Beach to check. To check for what? And then you're going to jeopardize. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's yeah. not funny, but in the same sense, you, you're thinking, but that's how a lot of our people behave. Yes. We run to the problem yes. as opposed to running away, away from, from it. We want to be the first reporter. Yes. And in this current climate of uh, social media, mm, yes. where everyone has a mobile phone, everyone wants to record, and everyone wants to have the news first, yes. likes, views, and shares. Right. How are you going to now mitigate that problem? This will be two natural disasters or yes. disasters you are going to face. I do. Um, <laughs> that's why we are here. And we, we are planning a series of um, trainings, a series of workshops, a series of public education. Mm -hmm. I think um, it's like you say, it's the perception, and this is something we need to change. We need to let persons know how important it is to ensure that you do not run towards a hazard. Um, we need to ensure that persons understand the risk that they are take, taking or the risk they are putting themselves at mm -hmm. by moving towards um, a hazard. Because we tell them, if you can already see that wave coming, more than likely, you won't have time to get where you to get to safety mm -hmm. if you can see the wave. So we want persons to understand how important it is to ensure that they move to higher ground. If you are given that warning, do not wait, especially during a simulation. Mm -hmm. We want persons to take it serious because what you do during practice 
you will do it in in the um, live mm -hmm. situation because that's what you're used to mm -hmm. so we want persons to to understand and you see public education that is our focus we need to mm -hmm. educate persons until they get it if is that if that's what we have to do as the disaster office we will keep doing it because we want our citizens to get into a state where they are proactive to the point that if they see somebody else doing it, they can say, this is wrong. Mm -hmm. This is what you need to do. So this is where we want to get our country. Um, it may be a lot of work because, again, the perception, <laughs> it is very difficult. We have it in our minds. We see it. Mm -hmm. For mm -hmm. example, the time the water receded um, by water front, front. Oh, yeah, by fishes, back. we had persons sending us photos. Persons mm -hmm. went down. I mean, you did not know what was there at the time. And you are being taught that if you see the water receding, you move to yeah, higher yeah, ground yeah. because that is one of the signs mm -hmm. of a potential tsunami, if you do not know. But we had persons going down, calling us and telling us they are on the bridge now, you know, and um, they're seeing the water is moving back. It is, um, there is no water in the bay and whatever. Rather than move to higher ground, the persons were there on the phone calling us and asking us, you know, waiting for an answer right there. Mm -hmm. So we want our, we want citizens to get out of that and get to a place, like I say, where they understand the hazards, they know what to do. Like you don't even need um, the office to tell you anymore because you would be so well prepared Correct. and get that information to empower yourself should in case you are impacted. Now, Ms. Lake, you mentioned a while ago, I want to go back to that one, um, that the experts they have already declared we are due. Mm -hmm. And we are reading almost every January or February Kikam Jenny decides it was yes. to celebrate the new year and have a party as well. And um, there has been heightened activity noted yes. among these underwater volcanoes. And uh, we have recorded tremors in islands like um, St. John's, Antigua, St. Kitts, even here in St. Lucia. Mm -hmm. um, some people thought it was fireworks on um, New Year's Eve, but it was actually a, a slight tremor. Mm -hmm. What does that have to do with um, St. Lucia and a tsunami? Kikin Jemi is an active submarine volcano or sea mount on the Caribbean sea floor located 8 kilometers or 5 miles north of the island of Grenada. So that is, that's just down the road. Mm -hmm. That's south of St. Lucia. South, south of St. Lucia, mm -hmm. north of Grenada. If Kikin Jemi decides to act up as all are expecting and it erupts, there is no time. 20 minutes. So let's, say, let's say 20 minutes. Our coastal areas, we have early warning systems mm -hmm. or sirens and not necessarily, not specifically for tsunami, but the early warning systems are in Ancillary, Canaries, Denry Village, Marsha. Mm -hmm. That is where the systems are located. Marsha. So Marsha. Mm -hmm. Right it's, in it's, 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 it's for flood. Okay. But I'm saying that's the only place where you have sirens which can be activated from the NEMO headquarters, okay. remotely. Mm -hmm. And when persons hear it, then again, too many sirens confuse the population. If Kick and Jemmy acts up right now, while we are here, there is no pre-staging. You wouldn't get police officers at schools doing traffic control or whatever it is. It'll mm -hmm. be persons looking to move to higher ground. The, 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 the jury is out as to, do you look back and look for the less fortunate in that regard? or do you move those able to higher ground? The information is out so everybody knows when that tone, and the, the emphasis will be on the particular tone. Mm -hmm. When you hear it, move to higher ground. Because we're going to be testing this year communications, mm -hmm. CB, VHF radios or the ham operators, Facebook. Mm -hmm. There's an app called cap.cap, yeah. cap, mm -hmm. which will give you those alerts. Um, the radio interrupt by the various radio, various radio stations, various radio and TV stations, the government service with the Zimbra, SMS texts from both Digicel and Flow, and the sirens. As the director said, the pilot run by library right now, the intent is to have all coastal areas on the island tsunami ready. Mm -hmm. So each individual district would go through the process of putting in place what is required to be tsunami ready. Okay. So once that siren is sounded, it then goes sound for a test, it wouldn't sound for hurricane or volcanic eruptions, tsunami. Okay. How will we know that is the sound? 
What will tell us that's the sound? It's a particular sound that we we have the sound, but the process of transferring it to all entities, but we want it to be done all at once, so you will not have one different to what another station would have. Okay. We have some process of rolling it out so we can have, give everybody that same sound. So when, like now we're on, the sound could be played. This is what it's a particular tune. So, oh, okay. so there will be PSAs going out there'll on be the PSAs television station. When stations you hear this, as well? All right. No, the same way when you look at TV sometimes and you get an interrupt from the US TV, mm -hmm. this is an emergency alert system. And you hear this particular sound. When you hear the sound, move to higher ground. Once you hear it, move yeah, so to higher ground. Okay. So it's a sound where we have made it specific for tsunami. The only time you go into a that siren mm -hmm. is if there is a tsunami. Um, it won't be the, it won't sound like the one from the fire service mm -hmm. or police okay. or any emergency vehicle. It was developed specifically for tsunami. So again, like I tell you, our public education, that is one of the areas we are looking at to ensure that everybody knows. So whenever you hear that sound, mm -hmm. you don't even want to wait for the message after because you already know that sound means Move. tsunami um, warning or a tsunami um, alert or something has to do specific with a tsunami. At no point mm -hmm. will it will be utilized for any other hazard, any other incident, any other emergencies. Okay. Um, just before we close off, the effectiveness of the uh, drill that is coming up um, for the island, how will you evaluate um, its effectiveness? Uh, is there a certain criteria that you, you have or you use to measure the success? Yes, we do. There's a set of questions. We, can, we, we will look library is going to be tested because they are going to be tsunami ready. So they would have had their procedures in place, which mm -hmm. we would evaluate and see if they are following what it is. Within the other basins or other areas, we have had drills before. It is how quickly the issue is, is how quickly the persons get the message mm -hmm. and the speed at which they leave. Leave bags behind, leave what it is. Before we would plan and have police, uh, police or traffic wardens to assist in stopping traffic if it really happens, and like we are here now, there wouldn't be any police officers or any safety or security persons to assist in that regard. Mm -hmm. We understand that caution must be taken in, in, in getting it done for the evacuation part of it. But if you practice putting persons in in that regard, you can evaluate. Right. Yeah. right. It is how quickly persons receive the message and the actions taken. So we're going to choose a few locations other than library to see was you must have persons to evaluate and you can't evaluate on what they don't have. If mm -hmm. this particular school or entity does not have a drill mm -hmm. or, or procedures in place, what are you evaluating? So the list will be checked through before the date itself to see who has drills and who has not, see how we can assist them in putting in place. So when the, anybody who passes and evaluates would know exactly what they're looking for because of what this entity or, or institution has in place. All right. Well, trying to get us all tsunami smart. <laughs> Very important. Um, any final words before we close off? Um, yes. Um, again, we want to inform the general public. We want them to take um, preparedness mitigation for any hazards, not just tsunami. Seriously, we want our country to become proactive and not reactive. And um, we want to ensure that everybody participate because it building community res resilience, it allows you to prepare not just for your country or for your community, but yourself, mm -hmm. your family. It, it would be good to ensure that all families, you have your family plan, and you ensure that in the event of any hazard, any incident, that you know what to do and you are prepared so that it, you'll better be able to manage. Um, so we want to ensure that persons take um, disaster preparedness, mitigation, very seriously. It is better to be prepared than you have to um, um, respond because when you lose everything mm -hmm. through lack of preparation it is more difficult to replace those things that you had before so we want to ensure that if you prepare properly then you may not have you may lose something but not as much and you'd be in a better place um when you have to start over thank you Mr. Lake. well i'm telling persons sometime next month you're going to get this text on your phone see where you are work within the confines of what you have we are hoping that it doesn't turn out that when the text comes out, it will say it's a drill. <laughs> if the text does come out, that is the actual, we want persons to move the same way. Right. Because you do not know, we do not know if the day we're going to be doing the drill, 
there's an actuality of the tsunami. Happening. So be mindful that when the text comes out, we don't want to set any panic. It's, the intention is not to panic or to displace any person in that regard. Mm -hmm. It's to see how we operate as citizens of this country to move to higher ground or to work along. We prepare, when you have a hurricane, people go and shop and do all things in preparation, mm -hmm. in advance. Tsunami gives you no advance warning. All right. Well, thank you very much for joining me today. And Good, folks, uh, of course, I'm encouraging you when you hear that siren, don't wait, run to higher ground. Don't look at your nearest mango or coconut <laughs> tree either. <laughs> Be a lot safer than that. Again, thank you all for joining the program this morning. This has been Issues and Answers, a production of the Government Information Service. I've been your host, Kendall Eugene. Thank you for joining.